Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I am going to show you 10 Dollar Tree Spring DIYs that are absolutely beautiful and you are definitely going to want to try them. If you like crafting DIYs, hacks, dupes, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like what you see in this video, go ahead and like it by giving it a thumbs up. But let's go ahead and get started. This is one of my most favorite projects from Dollar Tree ever. I love how this turns out. I'm sure you have seen these little plastic storage containers for like cookies and treats. Dollar Tree seems to have them for every season or holiday. There are so many different uses for them. So if you find them, pick up a couple so you can do some projects too. But I am just using some of the rope from Dollar Tree as well as some of the nautical rope. Now the nautical rope that I had did come from Hobby Lobby, but I do have a bunch and I have seen it lots of times at Dollar Tree. So you can easily just use that as well. I just happen to have like a great big spool of it. So I'm just working through that. So you can see I left a little gap on that bottom row so I could kind of feed up some more. So I had just like a little piece that I was putting on the bottom row. And so that's how I'm getting the next row to come and look very cohesive. And of course you may have a couple of seams. You're going to try to get all your seams lined up as close as you can on one space. So that way you can kind of turn that to the back when you're displaying it. So I'm going to do about three rows of the rope and then I'll go in and do two rows with the nautical rope. And this project is really so easy. If you can use a hot glue gun you and like turn something around in a circle, like you can totally do this. So you just do a little bit of hot glue, place your rope, let it dry a little bit so you can move on to the next area and just work in little areas, being careful not to do like your bead of hot glue. You don't want a whole bunch coming out, just a little bead, place your rope, let it dry and just keep spinning until you get the desired amount of rows for the pattern that you're going for. When you're starting a new portion with the rope, you're just gonna put a little bit of hot glue around that and let that dry. That's going to stop any fraying from happening. So you'll just have to do that when you start each new row or a new piece of rope. Now you'll be able to see where my seams are all kind of lining up at the back. So that's what you're going to try to do is have one cohesive area like that. So that way, you know, you can kind of tuck that away and hide it. Now when you get to the top, I'm just going to make sure that I go up above the plastic container so it kind of finishes it off with a little bit of a nicer look. Now I also have one of these little uh, oval shaped tins that I did from Dollar Tree and look at how cute they look. I just got a couple of like Ikea plants to put in them. You could do whatever floral arrangements you wanted. To. You could use them for so many different things, but I love how these turned out. I feel like they are truly so high end and nobody would know that it was Dollar Tree. I happened to be at Dollar Tree one day when they were getting a shipment of these 3D orbs in. They were kind of stocking them. So I grabbed one thinking, oh, I'll figure something to do with this. And honestly, I wish that I had grabbed more because I have not seen them since then. And that was like all the way back in February. So I just put the orb together and I'm taking this candlestick from Dollar Tree and I'm just using a massive amount of hot glue to glue this orb to this candlestick. So I'm just, you just want to you're gonna hold it for a while, I guess is what I'm saying. And then I wanted to have some type of little platform there in case you wanted to stick like a plant is what I put in there, a candle, something. So I just used one of my canning jar lids and glued that in there because I am going to spray paint this and do some other things with it, you'll see. And so you won't be able to tell that that's what it is. So I'm just using some matte spray paint and I had a little wood finial that I did glue on the very top. And then I am going around to just give this a really rough up finish and then I'm just staining some beads here because there is a gap between the pillar the candle pillar and the little jar lid so I thought it would be a perfect area to kind of tuck in some beads to give this a really roughed up, rusted, old aged look, I am just using a bunch of different colors of paint and I'm using like a garbage sack, or not a garbage sack, but it will sometimes use it as a garbage sack, but a grocery sack that I had. And I am just using some of the truffle paint, some elephant chalk paint, and I am just going over this to make it look like it's kind of wrought iron that has sat out in your garden for a long, long time and just kind of started to age and rust. 
I decide that I want it to look even more aged, so I am taking some baking soda, a little bit of orange paint, and then some more of the truffle color of Waverly, but really just any brown that you have would do, or even like a maroon. And I just mix kind of um, a couple of those paint colors together with some baking soda, and then just lightly go around and just kind of pushing it on with my paintbrush to kind of give it a little bit more. You can kind of see how it really does just kind of look rusted and aged. I just really like how it came out and I love using the baking soda because when things kind of rust and they bubble up a little bit, they really do have that texture and the baking soda really does kind of help give it that realistic look. Now I'm just going ahead and touching up that bottom since it kind of was the shiny color of the white. I wanted it to kind of be more matte. So I did cover that with some chalk paint is what I did there. So I'm just taking a pot right there that I had and I just painted it white and kind of roughed it up. That's what my plant is going to go in. And then I just used a little bit of elephant chalk paint to kind of give a little bit of an aged look to the base of it. And now I'm just going to take these beads and hot glue them in all the way around that little gap that is between my jar lid and the uh, candle pillar. I do take just a little bit of what dry paint is left in my brush there and kind of brush it over the beads and everything to kind of brighten them up a bit and make it look like one cohesive piece. And there is my little pot that I did with a little bit of white paint and then a little bit of the elephant chalk paint. And I just stuck a cute little plant in it. This turned out so cute and I have used this in my house all year long and I've gotten so many compliments on it and I do kind of change the plant up a little bit for the different seasons and everything but I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of this if you guys are a fan of this if you like this I would love to know so I have tried this technique before and I absolutely love it. We are going to print on some tissue paper. So I'm cutting just a normal piece of tissue paper to be just smaller than a regular size piece of copy paper. And I'm going to put that shiny smooth side of the tissue paper down towards the paper and then just tape down all sides with whatever tape you have. I just have painter's tape on hand there. Uh, but you just wanna make sure all the tissue paper is taped down and you'll feed it through your printer just like normal paper and the image prints right on the tissue paper. Now, as I'm cutting this out, I just want to let you know that the ink will kind of bleed through to that copy paper so just be aware of that. I found this darling little flower bucket at Dollar Tree this week so hopefully you'll be able to find them but I thought it would be fun to give this a really cute uh, blue pastel blue color for spring and I'm going to make some faux rust. So I use baking soda along with like a brown color like a truffle. I use Merlot a little bit of yellow and then like the pumpkin orange. And I just get a mixture of all these colors going together and keep adding baking soda, which gives it texture until I get the color that I think resembles rust the most. You want to be very sparing with the yellow, but I promise you the yellow is what makes this because when you look at things that actually rust, it will have like the different variations of colors. So once I get this on my brush, which it's quite thick because of the baking soda, I just kind of dab it in. You can see how I'm going all over there. And you just do that until your heart's content with how much rust you want on your project. Now with this tissue paper, I'm just taking a brush with some water and going around the design. And then I will just lightly pull apart the tissue paper to kind of give it a torn look. So instead of a clean cut line with scissors, it's kind of more torn and like natural looking. Now using matte Mod Podge, I'm just putting a layer down on my bucket where I want the front to be and uh, just kind of do a very thin layer of it. And then you're going to take your, and I'm just spreading it so it's even, you're gonna take your image and you're just going to lightly press it down starting in the middle and then just lightly press because the tissue paper will tear once it gets a little bit of moisture on it. So you're just going to lightly press and if there's any bubbles, you just kind of lightly smooth those out. This is very sped up of how I did that. So just know you're going to work a little slow. And then I take the matte Mod Podge. And right now I'm just going around the edges to make sure the edges are all down. And then after I have that, I will go over very lightly with a very light coat of Mod Podge over the design. 
And then to make that image kind of blend in a little more, I take and dry brush some of the original blue color over the top of the design. Now, if you did this on a white bucket, if you'd painted it white, that image would completely disappear and you would not be able to see the part of the tissue paper at all. And it picks it up kind of in the light on camera, the, the tissue paper. But honestly, when you're looking at it with like your naked eye, you can hardly see that it's tissue paper. But I love this design. I just threw some of my peonies left over from one of my wreath projects and put in there and I think this looks so beautiful. That rust looks so natural to me. It looks like it's been sitting out in your garden like all winter long. You forgot to bring it in and it just kind of rusted. I just think it's so spring and so cute and I love this color. Let me know what you guys think about that rust down in the comments if you like it or if you're not a fan. I love how this DIY turns out and I just want you to know that this 100% came from the brain of Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living and I will leave a link to the video where she made this and also her channel down there just so you can check her out if you want to because she is so talented but I loved this DIY and it was so simple and perfect for spring. So I'm just taking one of the candle holders from Dollar Tree and one of the wire baskets and I super glue them to one another. I did end up spray painting them black which I probably really didn't need to do. I kind of thought I would sand this more and the black would shine through so you can actually just go for it with with skipping that step that's why I didn't show me painting it all black but I'm just taking a makeup sponge with a clothespin and I am just dabbing some white chalk paint all over this I will end up covering the whole thing you could even just take this and just spray paint it completely white if you wanted to do that which you know here I go everything's totally white and I ended up not sanding it down but I make a rust color and I love this rust on here I think it looks so good I take um, a brown a maroon an orange and a yellow to make my rust and I'll kind of go over the spots of where I want that rust texture to be and then I'll even go in with just a teeny teeny bit of yellow over and dab it on because if you look at natural rust it really does kind of sometimes have that little yellow fleck and sometimes I mix a little baking soda in it to give it a good texture it just depends on the project that I'm working on. You can make this as rusty as you want or not at all if you want to skip that step. I just loved the fact that it looked like it had been sitting out like an egg basket sitting out on the farm for a long time. Now I do go down on that riser, that little candle holder, and I do add a little bit onto that so it looks like it was rusted and I use a brush to do it on there and I am just tapping to give it that texture and if you put baking soda in there this will give it that nice rusty texture how rust kind of bubbles and I just do that till your heart's content or till it looks good and then I just put a little Spanish moss and some eggs in it and look at how adorable this is. I love this. I use it all the time in my spring decor. Actually, I ended up leaving this out through most of the summer last year with just some regular uh, farm eggs in there and it was so cute. For this project, I'm using one of these large Dollar Tree tag signs that were in at Christmas time. I think they have them for all holidays though. I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size because I'm going to put this on the front of the sign, which is going to become the back of my sign. So I'm just going to cover up this glitter and everything with the craft paper so I don't have to worry about sanding that off or painting or anything. Now I just put some hot glue around the edges and then I just firmly press down to make sure that that is nice and secure. After I've done all of the edges, I just trim that excess off and then file the edges so it's a nice crisp look. Now I am taking a page out of one of the Dollar Tree calendars. The nice part about this is you could use this for any holiday with any of the pages. I do just give this sign a coat of white paint because you will see a little bit of the excess of the sign sticking out. So I paint over the whole sign so it's consistent in color. So so after I get that all done, I'm just going to take my regular purple glue stick. You guys know I love this stuff. I have yet to have a problem with any project that I've used it on, so I just keep using it because it works. I very liberally put this on, and you can see that purple color does start to fade almost immediately as you put it on. And I just make sure I get where the edges and everything go. And if you get a little outside of the edge, it's okay because it's going to dry clear, and you can wipe it with a baby wipe to get it off if you can still see any of like the sheen or anything. I just use my Mod Podge roller there to make sure that it is all nice and smooth as I can anyway. I mean, it is paper, so it will kind of wrinkle a little bit. It's a thinner paper on those calendars. And then I'm just going to make some little um, faux wood lines to kind of match the paper there. Now, I know this paint doesn't match the paper exactly, so you could be more exact if you want. I am going to put some florals at the top, so I didn't really worry about it. But I just color in some faux wood grain, so if you do see it, it kind of blends. And I just take a little bit of white paint on my brush and gently go over those lines to make them fade a little bit. And it really does blend extremely well. 
So I'm just putting a little twine hanger at the top of my little tag here. And I decided it would be really cute to have some beads on the hanger. So I just use a little bit of painter's tape on the end and I just go ahead and string beads on each side and then tie it off in the middle. So using various florals that I have, I am just going to make a little swag to go on the top of this. I just use what looks springy and make sure that it's even on both sides. And then I just tie it off in the middle with a little bit of jute twine. I have this darling pit berry that I got at Hobby Lobby in there. It was actually in their ribbon section. So I bought it when the ribbon was on sale, but I thought it would be cute in there. So I just slide the little wire into the middle there. I thought that just added kind of a fun little textural element there. And I did make a finger bow just by wrapping jute twine around my finger, maybe like 10 to 15 times and then tying it off in the middle. So I just glue that in the middle of my little swag there. And then I'm just going to glue this onto the top of the sign. I do want my sign to look faded, so I dry brush some white paint over the uh, calendar page there. You can see how fun that looks and the good texture. This is completely optional. I just go around the edge with some elephant chalk paint and then go over the picture a little bit too, just to have that distressed look because I love that. Here is the finished product, you guys. What do you guys think of this? I decided to hang it up here to show you with the little beaded hanger on there. I think this turned out so cute and such a fun idea to do with those dollar store calendar pages. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. This particular DIY, you can use any type of sign blank that you have or anything. I got this at Dollar Tree. It's a cute little glow in the dark sign, but I bought it with the intent that I was going to make it over. So I am just covering all sides and that flat portion, the front of it, all with some white paint. You can use chalk paint, acrylic paint, whatever you have and in whatever color. So I have a little helper here. So my little boy was helping me make this sign. So that's whose hand you see and they're kind of helping me out. So once I get this all the way done, I'm going to take some painter's tape and we're going to make some stripes on it. So I just lay my painter's tape down and then put one in the middle and then another. That's middle one's going to be my spacer. So it will come off and then I'll be able to place another one on top of that as you can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to use the pounce method with some black paint. So I'm just pouncing up and down lightly with a little amount of paint right along the edge of the painter's tape to seal that edge. So you're going to have minimal like bleed through from the, the stripes. I don't wait for the stripes to dry completely. I let them um, dry a little bit, but I mean, while it's still kind of wet, I do peel up my tape. And then after it dries completely, I'm going to just distress this a little bit with my little file here. You can use a finger sander or whatever you have that you use. And then I have this sign from Dollar Tree from Easter time. And I really like the burlap, um, fabric here that has the blessed on it. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to make a little pocket on the front of this sign. So what I do is just tuck the little edges of the burlap up like this. And then I'm using some half beads to kind of look like some upholstery tacks or nail heads. And I do decide after I get this on here that I want to stain them or paint them. So I take a little bit of elephant chalk paint. You could just do whatever color. I just felt that the natural wood didn't really kind of give me the vibe that I was going for. And so I just kind of lightly try not to get it on my burlap and go over each of those little half beads. To get this on my sign, I'm just putting some hot glue on three of the edges. You want to leave the top portion open because we're making it a pocket. And so you're just going to put glue on the sides and the bottom and then using whatever like silicone spatula or anything you have, because that hot glue does kind of seep through the burlap. You're just going to push that down and make sure that it is on really good. And then you just take some little floral picks, kind of cut them down, take them apart, put whatever you would like to inside of this little sign. I think this is adorable. I actually use this on a tiered tray and I think it turned out so cute. This is another project that I absolutely love. It's one of my most favorites of all the projects that I have done from Dollar Tree. So I'm just taking some garden fencing and I am going to cut off the little stakes at the bottom and then also these little latches that come on the side that you would use to hook like another piece into it. And so that way we've got a little bit more of a flat surface area to work with on the edges. 
Now I am just taking some zip ties and I'm going to zip tie this together so that way it makes kind of a cylinder shape here. I'm going to make a bird cage using this. So I just want to make sure that this is really tight together. These little zip ties are from Dollar Tree. They're just found in the automotive section and you get a pack. There's like black ones and red ones. So they're super nice to have on hand and everything. So I am now taking some embroidery hoops and I am going to, the size that I needed was the out, outer ring of the embroidery hoop. So I'm just taking the metal pieces off. Now, if you wanted to keep this completely to Dollar Tree, you would just use some like Easter basket handles or like the pale, um, sand pail handles or something like that would probably work really well also. So I'm just going to hot glue these in kind of in a crisscross pattern to make the top rounded dome to the birdcage. This part did take a little bit of time because I wanted to make sure that it was all like put together really well. So there was a lot of gluing and then clamping and letting the glue dry, moving on to the next area. And then even with at the very top, I wanted to make sure that there was not like a big space or anything between all the embroidery hoops where they met. So I was gluing each layer there on as well and clamping that. So just be aware that it took a little bit of time to do this, but it looks really nice in the end. Now I did get these little finials this would be completely optional but I found these at Hobby Lobby in a pack of like three or four and I'm just going to cut that little end piece off and then glue this on the top Now I take this out to spray paint it. You could paint this any color that you wanted. I, I can think of so many different fun colors it would be to paint this, but I chose to do mine white because I wanted to put a plant in it and have that greenery pop against the white, but so fun to do so many other colors. So I just make sure I give a really good, takes a couple of coats to get the inner part of that garden fencing covered. And then I take it inside and I, after it's all dry and I'm going to use my, emery board and I'm going to just kind of rough this up so that black from the garden fencing peeks through so it looks like it's been wrought iron that was painted that is now kind of wearing off I guess. <laughs> Now, since the top, the embroidery hoop does not have that black color underneath, if I was to sand it, obviously it would just be the natural bamboo color that comes through. And so I am just using some elephant chalk paint. Uh, you could use mineral, whatever color chalk paint or paint you wanted to use that kind of had that darker tone to it to kind of make it look like it matches the garden fencing. But look at how cute this looks when it's all done. I think this turns out so cute. I love putting plants underneath this. This is one of my most favorites. Dollar Tree has these wood signs, which are adorable, but not necessarily my style. And I'm also using one of these Dollar Tree calendar pages for this DIY. So I'm just cutting out that adorable truck on here, as well as the words fresh flowers. And I just wanna make a stacked kind of wooden sign. Now I do end up using three of these little wood signs here because um, you'll see in just a second what I decide, but I just thought this was so cute to have these on there and I'm just cutting them down to size and I'm just putting that truck there and I'm looking at it thinking it might need another layer. So I take part of the white one that I cut off and I am just going to use that. So I do end up using a total of three of the signs to make the four little layers and I just cover them all completely in white paint. These are stacked together and glued. I want you to be able to tell that they are like wooden blocks here. So I'm going around all of the edges with some elephant chalk paint. You could use like antiquing wax or anything uh, like burnt umber, anything like that. And I'm gonna go over with a very, very dry brush to kind of add a little bit of texture to match the background of that calendar page, if that makes sense. Cause that word where it says fresh flowers, it had um, a little bit of texture on the back. So I'm trying to match that so it blends in. And you guys know, if you've watched me at all, I love to use this purple glue stick. It holds wonderfully. You can see where you're putting it. It dries clear. I absolutely love this stuff. After I glue these down, I do go over them with a little bit of what's left of that elephant chalk paint in my brush and very lightly go over to in a very, very dry amount. That way, if that even makes sense at all, it kind of helps distress it and it all matches the background to the piece of paper. Now I am just going to glue this truck on here and make sure that it is um, nice and centered. Be careful, I almost tore that truck right there, so I'm so glad that I didn't. But I just kind of make sure that it is on the two bottom blocks, that those flowers don't peek up to that top block because I thought that would be, I just didn't like the look of that and I didn't want to have to deal with um, cutting that. And you'll see what I mean by that. So I just kind of flatten it all out with a scraper there. And then I'm going in with like my little um, like X-Acto knife here and I am slicing the truck. 
um, because I want this to look like it's blocks stacked together, not just one cohesive design, if that makes sense. I mean, it will look, hopefully this makes sense to you how I'm doing this, but I even go through and sand a little bit on the edges here because I want it to look, you know, like it's one, two, three, four stacked together. And so I'm just distressing around there. And I just think this looks so cute. I love going over this truck with the elephant chalk paint. I think that just brings it to life and makes this piece look so cute. I'm just using some Dollar Tree gel super glue to glue these together. And so I'm just going to take my um, like second piece here and glue on the bottom of it. And then I will put it, line that truck up. So it's super easy to do. You just line that up. And then I go onto the next layer to glue that together. Just get that centered. And then I'll do that last layer. Now that super glue dries really quick, but to help it be nice and secure, I am just going to use some clamps to clamp this together. And then for the top of it, I'm just taking some sprigs of like little floral picks that I have. These are just little pieces off of other florals that I have already. And I make a little swag to go on the top of it here. Now that pip berry I got at Hobby Lobby, it comes in like a gigantic like roll of it that you get over by the ribbon section in the springtime and it will last you all spring long, Easter long, forever. Like there's so much of it. And and then I'm just taking these cute little yellow and pink flowers. These just came off of another Dollar Tree pick that I had. I just took a couple of them off to glue on there. And I thought this just like gave it a really cute look and voila. I think this just turned out so cute. I love coming up with new ways to use the Dollar Tree calendar pages. They are so cute and it is so fun. What do you guys think of this one? This project is so simple and so sweet. You really just need any kind of jar with a texture on it. I got this one at Dollar Tree. It says homemade on the front of it and then has these little ridges all the way around it. I give this several coats of chalk paint. You can do it in any color you want. I chose white just because I could use it all year long. After that dries, you're just gonna go in with some sandpaper and just sand over those raised edges. If you do get a little too carried away or too much, you can always go back in and touch them up with a little bit more paint, which I did. I do like things chippy, but you know, even I have limits. And then I just take a bouquet of flowers from Dollar Tree. You can use any kind of seasonal pick or anything like that. This is so perfect to just kind of tuck in your house where you need a little bit of florals. I just think it is so cute. It's so chippy, very farmhouse in my opinion. And those florals, those are very spring florals, but you could put some fall florals in there, even some sunflowers at summertime, anything like that to make this go all through the year in your house. So I love these little cube drawer boxes from Dollar Tree. And so I'm taking three of those to do this project with, and you're just going to remove that little insert. And I use those in other projects. I separate these all the time for different projects. And then I had those little plastic, um, almost like mason jars that came from Dollar Tree. So at first I'm going to put a little wood glue and hot glue so I get that long-term and short-term hold just between each of these little uh, containers. And I'm just gluing them together and letting them dry enough so that way I can start painting them. And then I'm just using a blue color. I believe this is the pool color in Waverly Chalk Paint, but whatever color, I just really wanted a nice spring blue. And so you can see I paint all inside of the little planter, everything there. Now I'm just taking these little jars and I am just wrapping some twine around the little lip of the jar. And then I make just a little shoestring bow and I put that at the top. Honestly, depending on what florals you end up putting in these, you may or may not need that little twine bow. I just love the look of that. And so here you can see I do that same thing to all three of the little jars. And now I'm gonna take, once the paint is dry, our little planter box here, and I'm just going to sand the edges to kind of rough it up a bit. And I do take a little bit of elephant chalk paint, a very little amount, and just dry brush it all over just to add a little bit of that, you know, rustic texture to it and now I just take this cute little burlap almost like a burlap lacy type ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm just working in little sections so I get it straight and make sure it's down because there are so many little like holes in this I didn't want to just put a big long bead of hot glue along it because I did not want the glue to seep out everywhere so I just go around the entire box and then I just add some various florals from Dollar Tree and voila I love this it's so cute this is something you can also change the florals out all year long if you would like to if that blue matches your decor but I think it is perfect for spring and I just love how it turned out. I 
I would like to thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you got some inspiration for some fun spring Dollar Tree DIYs. Remember to like and subscribe if you would like to be a part of this Farm Charm Chic family. I would love that so much. And as always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. We'll see you next time, guys. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.